have a potter turn mini minder here that's coming out on this boiler install and i've opted to go with my favorite esi two channel wired programmer the es2247b now on the backer here should be a nice easy one neutral live hot water on is three heating on is four which should be the same in this and we have neutral live hot water on is number three i don't know why they do it in this cross fashion but they always have for some strange reason hot water on is three and you're normally off is one heating on is four so nice easy switch over up here you've got your blue red neutral live obviously carry out your safe isolation before you do this i've got the power all turned off because i'm on the boiler install and it's all been tested three is your hot water on so when that gets power that will send power to the common on the cylinder stack and then four is your heating on which will then once that gets power energized will then send power onto your room stat supply which obviously once you turn the room stat up will go over to the zone valves uh, should be a nice easy swap over so we've got our same same but different so neutral live three is hot water on four is heating on and unfortunately my fancy covers don't fit on this with my branded face plate thing but nevertheless still a nice updated programmer with all your normal options sorry guys sounds a bit iffy on this one because i didn't bring my mic into the job i'm hoping this is going to be a lap for lap swap so <clears throat> just twist that take it off I'll show you what one we've got in here. Hopefully, similar. So, is. Twist. Obviously, because I'm trying to film, it's a two hand job. slide straight in so they tell me all the all the other plumbers but actually let me check what setting we want this on oh see there we've got little letters so have to set it on the right one <coughs> Okay. That's in. So it turns out it wasn't a half inch shank on that pull valve. Um, pull valve, the float valve, fill valve even, gosh. Um, yeah, I've never seen that type and the hole is too small to fit a half inch. So I've got this Viva one from Tool Station, which comes with a half inch and a three eighths. So I'm hoping it's that. Fingers crossed. So here's the old one and let's see. 
that's the same size. Looks roughly the same. Let's try it on the hose. That's the one. So this just screws into the bottom. And you can either have three eighths or half of it. It's quite handy. That's a Viva, I believe. Viva Skyflow. all in let's get this tightened up and we're fitting new fill valve new siphon a viva free uh, free eights and a sam skipper 45 must say at she plums kelly told me this was the one I needed to order so that saved me so thank you I absolutely love these Nipex twin grips they're so handy for stopcocks especially so here we are to replace these taps quite a nice easy one easily accessible aside from the bits and bobs in the cupboard they've got the old copper tails rather than the flexi pipes so usually you end up having to cut these out because you can't really squeeze them through the hole but nevertheless not too bad these ones are actually better as they're on a compression i do often come across these where they're soldered onto the main feed pipes coming in which just a bit more of a pain but yeah they're not too bad either way this is what i mean a lot of the time you can't get it through the hole so you end up having to either undo that pipe which sometimes is a bit tricky usually they're seized in or you end up cutting one out now let's put the new taps together usually when you buy taps you'll get the same bits with them you'll get two flexies for your hot and cold you'll get the little fittings pack which has like a d locking ring i call it i'm sure that's probably not the technical name but also this little trick here i couldn't get hold of any flat faced ISO valves or flat faced compressions but someone told me SC plumbing and eating that you can use rad tails which makes complete sense don't know why I didn't figure that out before but you live and you learn none of us know it all so yeah that's a handy little tip and then obviously the tails can just go straight onto a normal compression generally you only need to put the flexes in hand tight as well you, they've got two little o-rings on them so they're pretty pretty solid so a hand tight is normally okay sometimes i nip them up a little bit if they've got the like flat face as you just saw on these ones and you can do it also on this little threaded bar here there is a flat headed slot for your screwdriver to make that a bit easier to go in as well They're generally easier to put these, like put everything together before you put them in. And then they slide in nicely through the hole. It's a pretty easy job. As I say, this one's quite good access. You can get to under the sink quite nice and easily. So pretty painless in terms of installation and even nice and easy to film this one. So I've come to a prop where they've had a smart meter fitted and they have found an 
8 millibar drop. So I am here to test it and see if that is the case. We've got meter, fire, oiler and a hub. I'm not sure if they've checked all of this, but we shall see. So instantly we can see that drop in. I reckon that's a lot more than eight millibar in two minutes to be fair. So now the next stage is to start isolating appliances. So first off, we'll start with the fire. <clears throat> Hopefully it's on an appliance. So you take off the little screw cap, then you've got another screw in there. Uh, doesn't feel like they've done anything with this. That's quite solid. Let's get something bigger. Got some leverage on it now. that shut off now doesn't look great anyway I wonder when she last had this serviced I wouldn't be happy with keeping that on anyway really but it being tested so let's go back to the meter I didn't set that exact I just want to see if it's dropping first yeah it's still dropping the same amount so it comes out of the meter straight into this barrel Straight into the floor. So it would be a new gas one. Let's go and isolate the boiler and the hub. Nope, still dropping. So now I have isolated the hob boiler. Hob was the last one and the fire. Nah, still getting a drop. So that means it's on the pipework, which goes down there. Comes out here and comes out. <clears throat> Down the back there. New gas one it is. Obviously I'll test the visible joints first, LDF. There's no smell of gas, something leaking that much would be pouring out, but for the interest of doing the job properly, We'll test that and then talk about a new gas run. No success today, guys. Just to prove the cap's back in the outlet. And no drop. So it's going to be under the floor, which is concrete and laminate. Concrete under laminate. So likely to be surface level for someone. I don't think I'll be doing this one. So I need it done 
ASAP, and I haven't got the time. Handy little tool. That's everything. <laughs>